I should probably start off by saying I'm not a teacher. I don't work in the education field directly, but um, I've become immersed in it and quite obsessed. So really what we do is we've been bringing design and education together and seeing a great opportunity to really use the design process as an application to really bring all these disciplines into, into everyday life. So design is actually used every day. It's a methodology that we think about, we use every day. The most simplest objects design was actually applied to solve problems. Taking that same philosophy, we started working with the school at Columbia about four years ago when we were asked by some of our clients to think about these big problems and find solutions for them. One of the topics being the future of technology. And we all kind of looked at each other in the office and thought, we need to talk to kids. They, they know how to solve this problem better than we do. So we kind of went out there and we spoke to the teachers. We said, can we talk to your students? They said, sure. And we put this exercise in front of them and the results were pretty mind blowing. They got really into it. We gave them a limited amount of time for one of the first times we did this. And we were blown away by the artifacts that they actually created, the way they could articulate the models that they actually developed. And we just thought, wow, this is great. We want more. The teacher came back to us and they said, we want more too. What started off as something that initially we thought this could be great for our project, it actually benefited the students greatly. They were using their math skills, they were using their, their communication skills, their science skills, physics skills. So it came to a point where we had a great dialogue and we said, hey, let's use design as a process to really allow things to, to happen and really allow the kids to get excited and start to apply all of these classes. So we took the process of design and we do this every day. A lot of us do this every day, not as designers, just as individuals. You know, we start with research, we ideate, we think about ideas, we go into 3D, all the way to thinking about how can I actually launch this product? What would I name it? How would I market it? Um, where would be the right place to actually present it? So we took 45 students from the eighth grade and we just made up a project. And this was actually a very recent one. And we said, okay, let's make up a project just to, just to have them dream up the future of the classroom. And we gave them a toolkit, not very complicated one. Markers and paper. No big budget necessary, everybody can do this in their own backyard. And we gave them templates, so it wasn't such a lofty thing, right? Sometimes you need to ground these topics um, just on paper and we said, hey, here are some templates for you to use and start. Start your process with these. Let's just fill in some blanks. Step one, the, the teachers actually group the students together into groups of three with people that they wouldn't expect to work together. But hey, this is a real life situation. We work with people all the time that we may not like, um, that we may not have chosen to be our group partner. But we learned to work with them. They identified project leaders who would be the ones to actually lead and initiate and kind of be that go-to person to make sure that the project is on course, that they're, they're doing their, their roles. And they started to really start to think. And they went out and they did their research. They filled up these boards. We heard from everybody, you know, the classroom's boring. We need to look at the classroom furniture and make it more interesting. Um, they identified who their customers were, who their audience is. They were telling us about, you know, that we need to think impossible, we need to think smart. Um, and, and they're really thinking about these everyday objects that they interact with. What they love the most is students love to talk about all the problems of all the things that they have to deal with. They love to complain. So we said, take it a level further. For every problem you identify, we have to have a solution for. So in some cases, it's a, big, it's a design solution. Design can solve for that. And they wrote it down, and for every problem, okay, think through how do we solve for this. There's a big lofty word called, it's boring. Well, what can make it unboring? Is it colors? Is it materials? Is it the shape? What aspects are not going to make it boring? Um, and we really make them think it through, and we had these check-ins, and they're asked to present to the point that we said, you have to articulate your big idea. This is something that adults we work with cannot do to distill it down to one sentence. And this was pretty interesting because this group in particular, and I'll actually read it out loud, they came up with a story. I'll just read the last two lines. So they say, we made up a story. 
Functionality and creativity meet at a bar. They start to date and they get married. And then they have a baby called modularity. And their big idea was about modularity. And they had this desk that was all about modularity. And when you're in group environments, it would, you would be able to actually bring the tables together. It had latches. And then you could separate them. But they had this story. And it's all about telling stories. And that's how you can start off with this big idea and distill it and edit it down to something physical and tangible. At the same time, they confidently stood in front of us. And we were panelists, let's say. and they. They presented their big idea, and they told us that organization is key. And one group came out with putting relaxation into education. And, and they were very proud and very confident about articulating these ideas. And they had a very strong point of view. But what was the biggest standout is math was the class that was leading this project. The math teacher even kept emailing us, like, what kind of Unit should we be using as a metrics? You know, what, what should we be really guiding? What's the percentage of error when you're actually making a product? Um, there's a great percentage of error. Um, but anyway, so you know, the students were actually measuring different desks because they're all complaining about the size of their desk and coming back to us with, you know, here are the dimensions we should be looking at. You know, what is the volume? What is the scale? Um, we got sketches. I mean, I'm just giving you just a, a very short glimpse of um, one sketch. We had models. Here's one model in particular. And we have a lot of these pictures, but that's not even, I don't even want to talk about that, because that's another talk altogether, what the end result was. The, the focus is really about the process, and that the value that the design process brought into a class of eighth graders. And you know, this idea, the student had this great idea about putting these balls, almost like these taxi balls um, that you have on chairs. Uh, actually, chairs and, and taxis. And he said, you know, I was in my science class, and all these balls fell down. And I sat on it, and I thought, hey, this is comfortable. And he said, you know what? That's actually how great ideas come to life. So you had this great idea, and the surface, half of it was chalk, because everybody wants to doodle. Um, but the thing is, you know, the big thing is that it also taught the students to provoke the obvious, to critique things, to look at, huh, how can I make this better? And, and throughout this exercise, from the first day, that a lot of them couldn't even tell you what design was. Um, many people like to kind of throw it into the arts. But instead, now they look at it as it's a process. It really allows me to rethink things. I look at design as a way to solve problems. I look at how everything around us is designed. And, and it really allows me to think of, how can I make this better? And of course, kids have a very strong point of view. In the end, you know, they're really stood up there. And these are some of the examples. Um, and, and the groups came together, no matter, you know, however they may have started off with different ideas, but at the end they came back with like one strong message, which was very powerful. And apart from having extremely inspirational insights, um, the learning for them was tremendous. And when we asked them, you know, how did you guys feel about this? And they, they raised their hand and they said, well, we actually got to make things. We actually got to apply what we've been learning. And, and it, it, for us, it's really, you know, we continue to work with the school and the teachers, and we continue to co collaborate and come up with, you know, project ideas of what's next, how, what is the next project that we can bring forward that will really allow the students to use this process. And, you know, it's, it's become quite obvious for us that design really has a role in education and that people can do this in their backyard. The toolkit, markers and paper, is not something that a budget could stop you from doing. And there are many, many companies um, that would love the opportunity to kind of enter this realm and really work with students and, and use this process. And I just wanted to kind of share, because you've heard me talk about this a lot, but um, yesterday in the mail, I actually received a package from the school with some letters from the, the kids and, and some of their insights of what they thought about this project. I'm just going to read three sentences from this. And this is from one, one student. It's interesting to see how science, physics, art, and math all come together. That's what I've been saying. Um, what I've learned is that when you see a design, it makes you think. How can you improve on that? Or how can it work better? And it allows for meaningful ideas to be combined with science and technology. I'm grateful that we're having a unit on design because it opened up a career option for me. Now I'm always thinking about furniture and what works and what doesn't. And that's just a little bit from them. But I think it's, um, it would be great if people really look at this as an example and think about how can we do this in our own backyard. Thank you. Thank you.